a good hello uh, welcome to another edition of that's railroad where uh, we bring the railroad to you okay today what we're doing we're marking ties we're down here at the uh, prep plant on the very uh, first part of our track and uh, we've got the uh, uh, tie gang coming in here tomorrow so I'm marking ties I'm, uh, we're going to talk today about uh, how to mark ties what you look for okay uh, thank you very much for tuning in and I hope you enjoy today's show okay here's one tie that I've marked and how I'm working I got my uh, nice little holder here with the paint can and I don't have to bend over and this is how I mark them with just an orange dot on one end or the other I probably have a grapple truck down here on this runaround track so that'll be easy for him to see the marks so here's one of the things we, we look for in a tie you see how this tie is all split here that and we got some splits in here now and over here even more that's one of the things that I look for now what happens is when that tie goes like that the water is going to start to drain down inside the tie and the longer it's left like that the more uh, the water is going to get down in there and the more it's going to rot really so that's one good thing one thing we look for uh, here's another one and this isn't real bad yet see this uh, tie plate here should have cleaned that off before I did this this tie plates cutting down into the tie okay that's called a cut plate tie all right it's starting to cut down in there now that is nothing that is out of uh, FRA specs but it's never going to get any better so we got the opportunity and we've got another bad tie here so uh, if and I've got 350 ties to budgeted for this project and we're going to change this one I'm going to try to find you a better plate cut tie here in a little bit okay uh, got a rail we got to change up here too I just found it uh, this is uh, over here is our run around track when we had the original just single locomotive he come up with cut of cars and cut off and come around cut off down here go in there throw the switch and come back up this run around track and then hook on the other end to load so uh, we've also used this other track over here when we have two trains running sometimes we do run two trains <clears throat> not a whole lot anymore but uh, it's going to pick up alrighty so we'll go up here and try to find uh, here's another here's another criteria I look for and that's a high spike okay I can drive that back down in here but what's happening is moisture is getting down in that spike hole and that spike is not holding so I can almost pull it out with my hand yeah see that uh, that tie is getting replaced and yep I painted I painted uh, walking down from the loadout so there you have it we'll go up here and see if uh see what else we can find so i can show you we'll be right back now this is a real good example of rotten tie that's rotten just rotten you know and obviously that's not gonna that's no good so but that is a good example that tie is definitely coming out and uh see what's going over here by this tie plate so just water's just going down in there and it's not going to be long before uh, this tie just falls apart and the spikes just fall out so that's another thing that we're looking for there I did tell you that uh, I don't know if I told you or not but anyway I'll tell you now this all the way track up to where the loadout is it's called accepted track EX c-e-p-t-e-d and what accepted track is means that under uh, you cannot go over 10 mile an hour this is a 10 mile an hour speed limit until I get past the uh, switch down there on curve 5 with the rear locomotive 
Okay, so that's what accepted track is. So it's 10 mile an hour. Still got to get inspected, but they're not allowed to go over 10 mile an hour on this track. Okay, I shut my camera off and I walk a few feet and I find more stuff I wanted to show you. Now this is a real good example of a plate cut tie. Did you see how far that plate is down in there from the top of the tie? That's a severe case of plate cut tie. All right, so, and you see this, this tie is just shot. And uh, spikes over there aren't holding. That's a real good example of uh, why we need a new tie in here. Real good, that's plate cut over on that side also. This side's not cut too awful bad, and uh, what happens when you get several plate cut ties in a row, then your rail cant starts to either uh, dip in or dip out, depending on which side of the tie plate has cut. And some geometry uh, vehicles do measure rail cant. So obviously, if you're uh, especially in a curve, you don't want your rail leaning over this way or leaning too much this way. So that's why they measure the rail cant. But the, the plate cut ties are the uh, main culprit for having excess rail cant. Okay, we'll be back. And this one's starting to get a little plate cut also. So this one. This one and these are all going to, uh, see our spikes aren't holding here on this either. So all three of these underneath this joint, your uh, ties under the joints are critical. So we're going to get some uh, real good wood in here. Yeah, it's tangent track still. Uh, we've got a tie gang coming in tomorrow, like I said, and we're going to take advantage of them get this all done now here's one it's pretty bad that I uh, neglected the mark when I was walking I was walking that's why I walked back so we're gonna mark this one and we'll change this tie too I walked down this side and then when I walk back I walk center of the track so I can see over here better and over here that uh, this one's all boogered up one thing about it we're not in any danger with anything down through here in losing gauge we've got certainly got enough ties on accepted track here to uh, to keep our gauge held okay I like doing this I like to mark ties it's fun <laughs> this is railroad <laughs> Okay. Well, here's an example of a really good tie. We had going through here, I'm trying to think it was maybe three years ago, and, and put some ties in. I don't know, we didn't put enough in, but we did put enough in to, uh, to secure it and hold track gauge back here. So. That's a, that's an example of a really good tie, you know. And after uh, three three or so years, I don't remember the exact time, but uh, you know the spikes are holding really well. Uh, the tie's still in very good shape. Okay, we got another good one up here, and another good one right up here. Here's a really bad one. See how it's all splitting out there. Spikes not holding. There's no danger of the gauge spreading because I got good spikes over here and I got good spikes over here. But we're going to replace this because it's under a joint and it's all boogered up and I don't like it. See how this is split out really bad? The water just pours down in there. 
that's no good. So uh, there's not much there holding that spike either. Here's a now this this kind of stuff here is uh, not good either, as you can see, obviously. All right. Some of these ties are chewed up because they have car wheel off. Which is uh, why we came, if I remember correctly, why we came and put these newer ties in there back then. Okay, yeah, here's our bad rail. Uh, I'll show you that, why we're changing this rail up here while we're here. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and checking out the show today. Thank you. This uh it's called a crushed head. See the uh try to get this with the sun behind me maybe. Maybe that'll be better. I don't know. See it's flowing out here. I'll get a little shade here and, and uh, see maybe if you can see that a little better. But right here the railhead starting to break out now, now even if this chunk right here did happen to break out uh have a gap in there like that and uh on accepted track I, I don't think we would have a problem with it but uh i don't know if me blocking the sun is going to give you a better view or not like i said it looks like it's going to crack out here and just this chunk come out if it does happen but i said uh this week that rail will get changed but i don't think even if that broke out it would derail that's not that big of a gap for that uh, locomotive or car wheels to go over okay i'm back Got all my ties marked. I actually found 380. So we're going to have to bring some more ties up, but that's all right. Uh, we went, we are well over and above the Code of Federal Regulations the uh, on what is required for accepted track. Let me show you. Here's what it talks about in the this, uh, accepted track. And right here it says, no train shall be operated at speeds in excess of 10 miles an hour. No occupied passenger train, uh, no freight train operated that has uh, more than five hazmat cars, and the gauge cannot exceed more than four feet, ten and one quarter inches. Okay? So uh, even if we don't put any ties in down through here, we're still in uh, within Code of Federal Regulations, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we cannot go over and above the code of federal regulations and many railroads do do that okay each uh, 39 foot segment of track shall have a sufficient number of cross ties which in combination provide effective support that will hold gauge within the limits prescribed and i'm not going to read you those limits but uh um, maintain surface within the limits prescribed and maintain alignment all right and then we got a table over here uh, that shows you for class one track. So accepted track, class one is 10 mile an hour also. So uh, we only need five per 39 foot. And like I said, we are already in within Code of Federal Regulations, despite all the junk that you saw down here. And I certainly didn't show you everything. But uh, like I said, it's it's about peace of mind also and uh, doing the best that we can to try to keep the train on track down through here um and here's the criteria let me try to get this focused the criteria for a good tie which are not and you know there's the more the higher the class of track the more good cross ties you have to have so it can't be broken through uh split or otherwise impaired to the extent the cross ties will allow the ballast to work through or will not hold spikes or rail fasteners, and we found some of those. So deteriorated the tie plate or base of rail can move laterally. Uh, 
more than one half inch relative to the cross ties. And uh, we didn't really find any of those either, where uh, uh, our rail was able to move back and forth, okay, because of the uh, ties. And cut by tie plate through more than 40% of a tie's thickness. That really bad one that I showed you, where the plate cut was, uh, did, does not yet meet that criteria. So, anyway. Alrighty, there you have it. <laughs> this has been fun, and I hope uh, uh, hope it's been educational, and I hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed the show today. So thank you very much, and uh, happy rails to you. Until we meet again. Okay, rest of the day I'm going down track and fix some uh, fix some joints where I got some loose bolts and some bolts missing. Well, good morning. This is uh, three days after I barked the ties. I got a regulator down there cleaning up stuff. I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to be here today to get up closer. And uh, then your grapple truck. Got a spiker right there. A uh, trip machine and your spike puller. So they started down at the far end and they're working up this way. I got all this way up here yesterday. I was uh, on a crossing job down here yesterday. Wasn't able to get up here. And I am going to Miner's Annual Retraining. Uh, federal law requires a one day annual retraining for every miner here. So this is my eight hour day at school. So these guys will probably be done by the end of today. So I'm not gonna get up there. This is about the best we're gonna get. And I'm dressed in my nice clothes and it's uh, pretty muddy up there. Oh, it rained a couple last couple of days. So there you have it. Anyway. Okay, uh, that'll end this video and uh, Again, thank you very much for watching. We do appreciate it. Have a really good day.